What's up everyone, Ashton here from Without Code, back with another tutorial video, and today we're taking a look at our new iframe widget for the web builder. This widget is a super simple way to display an iframe on your website. Now iframes use an HTML frame to essentially display a website within a website. The other website is contained within the frame of the widget, and all you need is the URL of the other site, or the source site. Some ways this widget will be useful is to incorporate third-party services into your site without having to embed any HTML. Or when a third-party service that you wish to use does not have any embed code available. Now something we're asked for a lot is MLS and IDX real estate search functionality. It's extremely difficult to build an actual IDX widget and very expensive to have a custom-built native IDX system built for your site. So it's very common for realtors to use iframes to create a portal of sorts to an MLS search on their own website. This approach has no cost and it's very quick to do. Using iframes also allow your site visitor to do things like search MLS or make reservations, etc., without actually having to leave your site. Now, one criticism of iframes is that the content within the iframe is not indexed by Google, which isn't helping with SEO. But something that should be noted is that even if the content could be indexed, it could be penalized as duplicate content that appears on multiple sites, which is also damaging to SEO. So our advice is to use iframes conservatively and you'll be fine. Iframes are still used routinely on the web, even for major things you might use every day, like YouTube videos or Google Maps. So let's switch over to the builder. We're gonna work with our real estate theme here at Without Code, which would be a great place to implement an MLS using an iframe. Now I've cleared out a row here beneath our header slider, and we're gonna go right into the widgets panel, grab our iframe widget from the basics section, and we'll drop that into our empty row. Great. Now to resize this widget, we're not going to use the blue grab handle on this to resize the container. The dimensions are set manually in the design section. So we're going to stick with the default size for right now and start by getting some content in here. So let's take a look at our settings. For unique ID, as always, it's really important to make sure you enter something unique here for each instance of this widget on your page. Now for iframe source URL. This is the source website that we're going to implement using this iframe widget. So over in another tab here, I have a simple MLS search pulled up, and I'm gonna copy the URL of it so that we can use it as an example. Let's jump back to our widget, and we'll paste the link into our source URL. And after a few moments, as you can see, it loads the source site into the widget here, and that's basically it. If we're happy with the dimensions of the iframe, we can republish the site and be done. It's pretty simple and pretty awesome. But let's run through the rest of the settings here and we'll start by talking about dimensions. Now we can set the width and height in the design section of the settings panel here. We have the width set already at its max of 960 since we're using a standard 960 row. Now if we wanted to widen this, we could set the row to full bleed in the row settings, but we'll leave it at 960 for now. I am however gonna give this a bit more room vertically, so let me set the height to 600 pixels. Now at the top here, we've also got this horizontal position setting. Now this setting aligns the iframe left, center, or right. I'll keep it at center for now. Now at this point, the iframe content should be looking pretty good. The iframe is aligned center and it's fitting inside the widget container nicely. Now keep in mind, if the content does exceed the size of the iframe container, a scroll bar will allow the user to still access that content. Let's jump down here to negative margins. We have an option here for top, bottom, left, and right. And these settings allow you to basically crop the iframe if you'd like. Now, an example of a situation where this could be useful is where there is an icon or a logo or a header that you would like to not display within the iframe. So by adding some pixels to the negative margin settings, you can crop unwanted things off the side of the iframe. Now, beneath our negative margin settings, we have mobile scaling, which has a flyout panel here. These settings allow you to scale the content of the iframe so that it fits better on mobile devices. Now these options apply to mobile devices only. Our suggestion here would be to leave these alone and just see how things look first and then update them accordingly. And when updating, it's usually best to start with scale and then adjust the base width or height as needed after scaling. Scale values below 1.0 are usually what's needed to zoom out a bit so that the content shrinks and fits better on mobile screens. And down here we have some additional styling settings, including a background color if desired, a border for the iframe, and iframe rounded corners. Let me hop over to the content section once again. Now beneath our URL, we have an option for allow full screen mode. 
This allows the iframe to go full screen if the site inside of the iframe attempts to go full screen. So for example, when the site visitor enables full screen viewing on a YouTube video, this toggle must be enabled to allow the site inside the frame to go full screen. So keep in mind, this does not control the size or dimensions of the iframe itself, only if a full screen command is triggered inside the frame. Next is allow payment requests in iframe. This allows the payment API built in the browser to work within iframes. Iframe loading. Now there are two loading modes, eager and lazy. You may have heard of lazy loading. It's a new trend in websites that allows content to load as it enters your viewport as you scroll down a page. This allows the browser to load content as you engage with it instead of loading the entire page content regardless of what the site visitor views. And what this does mainly is improve load times on content rich sites. As this is a newer trend, it's not 100% compatible with all browsers, so keep that in mind. Now, eager is the default loading mode here, which loads the iframe immediately. And this term came out once lazy loading came along. It's the opposite of lazy loading. And then, of course, lazy loading mode here delays loading the iframe until it's actually in the viewport. So we've covered all the settings here in the panel, but I want to mention a few general pointers when using iframes. It's generally best when the source site of the iframe is not a large page. Generally, iframes are used when all that is found on the source page is the basic item that you wish to display in the iframe, such as a form or a map. Additionally, not all sites will allow you to display them in an iframe. Some websites forbid being loaded in an iframe to prevent clickjacking, and some sites and services offer embed codes that you can use on your site like Google Maps or YouTube and may not allow you to iframe the page since there is an embed code available. And in these cases, just grab the embed code and paste it into our HTML widget, which will accomplish a similar result. Okay, now one more handy tool I want to cover before we close out here. As I just mentioned, it is best to not use large pages in an iframe. It's not tidy and it can be confusing to the site visitor. However, if there is a certain portion of the page that you would like to display in your iframe, you can target a specific location with most pages. And this requires taking a look in Inspector. What this does is sets the top position of what loads in the iframe. Now you can't control what's below that position, but it still gives you more control over what content within the page is shown first. I'm gonna run through the basics on how to do this, but for more information on this, you can Google targeting container IDs and appending URLs. I have a random page pulled up here in my browser with a banana bread recipe. Now say we wanted our iframe to begin right at the recipe without any of this content above. Let's have it begin right here where it says ingredients. So what I'm gonna do is highlight the word. We're gonna right click and select inspect. Now this opens our inspector for the website. And since we clicked on a particular word, this will pull up that specific location in the page code. So from right here, we wanna look up from this point until we see a div ID. Now in this case, we see right here, recipe start as the ID. So what I'm gonna do is double click on it here and copy recipe start. So now let's direct our attention back up to the URL of the page. And at the end of it, we're going to add a hashtag or pound sign and then paste our div ID. And finally, we'll want to copy this entire new URL. So now if I open a new browser tab and we paste the URL, we can see that it loads the page right at the word ingredients. So what we'll want to do is paste this exact URL into the iframe widget. Great. Let's give it a quick preview. And we can see the iframe widget now shows the page at that exact anchor point. This technique of appending the URL with a hashtag plus div ID can work for many sites. Now, not all pages will have container or div IDs that you can use for this technique. It just depends on the page and how it's constructed. So that covers our iframe widget. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, my name is Ashton at Without Code. And if you need any additional assistance, reach out to us in support. Take care.